So some big news in the Tesla world yesterday, we learned that Andre Karpathy is walking away after five years with the company. Now he was the leader of the AI team and someone that a lot of people respected, looked up to, and a lot of people are really sad to see him go. I spoke with Farzad Mezbahi. He has his own YouTube channel and he also left Tesla after working there for four years. I wanted to get his insight on what a difficult decision this must have been for Andre and what this means for Tesla moving forward. Obviously he took, you know, a four month hiatus. So this maybe wasn't too big of a surprise for some people, but it seems like there's, you know, mixed reactions of some people saying, Hey, like you were even saying the Tesla roster runs deep folks. And then other people are like, Oh, this is, you know, such a huge loss. So what do you think? Yeah, I think, I think both statements are accurate, right? I think it's a huge loss from the perspective that Andre is obviously a super talented person. He is somebody who's had uh, a lot of influence in the uh, AI vision field. Uh, if uh, Tesla's put him in such a uh, high position as a director or really a VP of of uh, the person who's in charge of AI, essentially, for the entire company. And he was there for five years or so. The guy obviously has a ton of talent and a lot of capabilities and is a great leader. So from that standpoint, for Andre to move on to his next you know, adventure or, or, or uh, his passions or whatever he decides to do is, is, is a loss to Tesla. That's, that's true. That's super true. But the, the flip side of it is that Tesla being Tesla, and Elon being the sort of the kind of leader that he is that attracts a lot of uh, great talent around the world. It's also a true statement. I believe that Tesla is going to be able to move forward. No problem, because they do they do have the capability of bringing on top tier talent uh, at that position that will be able to make advancements uh, for Tesla from an AI perspective. And one of the parallels I would use is J.B. Straubel. So when J.B. Straubel left Tesla uh, two, three years ago, however long it's been now, that was considered a, a pretty big loss because J.B. was at the company for a really long time. And he's obviously incredibly talented, uh, great leader, great entrepreneur, great thinker. And uh, Tesla was able to step into the Model 3 ramp, the Model Y ramp, multiple Gigafactory ramps. Uh, Austin went up in record time in the States. Berlin was able to go live faster than anything else could be done in Europe. And they did all these things without JB Straubel. They put in Drew in place and now they're uh, rocking and rolling. So um, I think both statements are true. Big loss, but Tesla just, they know how to move forward. And uh, I think, yeah, I think I think they're going to be just fine. It, they're going to be just fine. Just fine. Yeah, Omar or Whole Mars Catalog on Twitter made that comparison with JB. And he also kind of posted a funny comment saying, you know, working for Tesla is like working for Hotel Tesla. You can check it, check out anytime you like, but you can never, <laughs> you can never leave, leave. <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. But it is interesting how, you know, some people put like you put in four years and Andre put in five years. And so it seems like it would be hard to leave. What do you, what do you think his motivations were? I mean, obviously maybe you don't know, but it, it was a hard decision for you. It was a very hard decision for me. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you for a fact that regardless of what position you're at in Tesla, if you're a director, VP, uh, manager, just a factory worker. I think for, for a lot of people, Tesla is a transformative experience. You get to work again with the, with the best talent in the world on a, on very important missions and very important things for the world. Right. So stepping away from that, you know, there is a battle with yourself that says, well, why, why should the things that I want to follow, why are they more important than this thing? You know, it becomes a very big struggle. Um, obviously I can't speak on his behalf. I don't know exactly what the decision was, but I mean, I, what I'm sure of is that it was a very difficult one that he made. And if, and, and if, and if he did make the decision in good faith, which I'm sure he did, it's probably because he's found something that's calling him louder than the time that he spent at Tesla for five years. Right. And I think the other variable as well that might get lost is that I don't think Andre leaves unless he feels confident that the team he's built around him is able to carry the torch forward. Right. And that's, that's one thing we can't forget. You know, I think great leaders do that. Great leaders yeah. ensure that they have the right pieces in place before they move on. And him going on sabbatical for four months, you know, I think uh, may have been a sort of a variable. Somebody in my, in my community said this and it resonated with me a lot. Rodman, he, he, he made a tweet that said uh, that probably was good time for his team to have the confidence to know that they can move forward. 
you know, right, right. and we've had full self-driving releases. We've had AI debut scheduled for September 30th. Uh, we've had updates go through. I'm sure the bot development continues. So um, these are all steps that great leaders take to ensure that the teams that they've built at certain companies uh, are able to move forward. So uh, let's not forget that piece either. Let's not forget that piece. I don't think Andre, uh, he wasn't obviously, he obviously wasn't fired. It's right. very, very obvious. He moved on and great leaders always leave, leave a great team and great talent uh, they give them the tools and the capabilities to step into Andre's role in the future. And that's a benefit for those people because now they're able to grow into who they are. Andre staying at the company forever is a disservice to everybody else on that team. And right. that's another thing that we have to keep in mind as well. Right. And he he did post that he didn't have any like real concrete plans yet. I mean, who knows if he if he does have something. He and probably he does. He just want to announce say. it. Yeah. yeah. None of us are in that AI team. None of us know what's going on. All we really see is what happens externally, right? We just right. see whatever products they come out with. Um, I'm not so sure. I don't think. So the one thing to keep in mind is that Karpathy's background is vision. So he's, he's, his expertise is around vision AI. Okay. Uh, so what that means it, within that context is that uh, a lot of his expertise, I'm assuming, you know, were, were really applied to ensure that the vision aspect of, of the full self-driving uh, stack, whatever you want to call it, is able to recognize objects, is able to digest the information that's coming through the cameras. They're able to take, you know, the pixels on the screen and turn them into actual um, things that, that are very easy to digest through with a computer. Uh, this is sort of put in layman's terms, but essentially that's what he's very, very good at. Um, who's to say that maybe that's now solved? And Andre is looking around and, and saying, you know what, I the other stuff that I could be working on, I'm not nearly as passionate about than this thing that I could be working on outside of Tesla. Maybe it's my time to go. So who's to say that that's not part of the discussion either? You know, maybe he maybe he he reached the goal. He knows that he can't bring um, either additional insight or he just doesn't want to because it's not part of his passion. And you know, there's, I'm sure they have hundreds of engineers on that team. There's going to be two or three folks at least on that team that are going to be at the at the caliber of Andre. That's able going to that they're going to be able to continue moving that torch forward. So um, it's impossible to say, but I think the opposite is true as well. Maybe maybe there's just maybe he only took it to a certain point, and he doesn't have the passion or he doesn't maybe have the expertise to take it to the next level. And then you know somebody else has to come in, and he recognized that and he said, you know what? Instead of me sitting down and going sabbatical and spending months to try and learn these things and try to find that fire to keep moving forward, you know, he's made a decision, you know what, I'm going to move on to the next thing. And that's amazing for, for, and, and as an individual, I couldn't be happier for him. Like we should all be extremely happy for Andre that he's, that's it, that he's in this situation where he's able to follow his passions. I mean, right. you, both of us, you know, you and I are in the same exact boat. We're following our passions. Andre yeah. is following his passions and yeah, big loss to Tesla, but if Tesla isn't churning out incredible leaders, you know, every five to 10 years or whatever you want to call it, Tesla is also failing those people well, because one, you need, yeah. One thing you mentioned is like my role here is over spotlighted. And I think that it just goes back to like, there are a lot of incredible people that we might not even know their name, you know, and like the exactly. mainstream, but like, you know, it's like the people that just put everything on Elon and, and seem to like think that he's like the only employee, you know, it's, know. it's, it's strange. Did you work with Andre? I did not work with Andre. No, okay. no, he was, a, but I did, I did uh, speak with some folks that were on his team and he was universally loved in the okay. company. Okay. He, the people really liked him and really respected him. He sounded like a, like he was just a really, really good guy. And he really took care of his people. I think there was a, there was a picture that was circulating. I think it was for his birthday or I forget what it was, his entire like team built, like dressed up like him for oh. whatever that is. So they all look like Andre. I forget, I forget what, what it, this was a, a while ago, but um, no, he, he, he was very respected. And from what I heard, you know, from, 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 you know, hearsay and whatever, but I never heard anything bad said about the guy ever. What do you think about also, you know, recently the San Mateo office closing? Do you think that's coincidence? I mean, reorg. Yeah. Reorg. I think I think with the um, that ten percent layoff for the salary workers and everything like that, um, Tesla. While I was there, every year or two there would be reorg steps. Really, every year, honestly, 
uh, Tesla would take steps to reorganize the, the structure of the company to make sure that it's going as fast as humanly possible. And then during the COVID year, so 2020, 2021 into 2022, um, there, I think there was a couple of years there where the company sort of ballooned in size. Yeah. And, but, but without really uh, making any org adjustments because, uh, you know, they were growing so fast. So I think what happened, and then you had the variable of everybody being remote as well. So you had these like two drastic variables that can really impact the way your company operates and how it's structured. And uh, two years time at a place like Tesla is like six or, or eight years at another company. So think about how many different things have sort of been uh, the layers that have been built and sort of the inefficiencies that are built in. Uh, but where Tesla excels is that they, they're very honest with themselves and they're not afraid to sit down and make the tough decisions. And they're like, you know what? This is what makes the best sense for the uh, company to move forward. They make the changes. And if that's an office closing down to ensure that, you know, that they're as efficient as humanly possible and they don't have wasted space, then so be it. So I wouldn't read too much into that. Tesla makes stuff, changes like that all the time, all the time. It's just, it's, it's rarely, rarely uh, published. So from your perspective, what is the current state of Tesla now? I'm, I'm very confident. I'm really, really confident. I think the, the way I view it is that in the, last, in the last two years, Tesla has stepped out of niche, sort of everybody thought they could be huge, to Tesla clearly on the path of becoming huge. They have four factories, two of which, which are barely ramped. Each of them are likely to have uh, a million car capacity over the long term. So in the next, say, let's say three to five years without any new gigafactor. So that's four million cars a year. You at four million cars a year, you're already the, at the halfway point of largest auto manufacturer in the world. Toyota and uh, Volkswagen, I think, are both around nine to 10. I think GM might be up there as well. Um, so they're already halfway through with the capacity, <laughs> with the gigafactories that they have. Then they have uh, full self driving being worked on this year with very clear um, improvements that have been made for the technology. And then you have within all these things, a company that's generating a tremendous amount of profit and cash for itself, that's going to allow it to fund its future prospects. So to me, it, it looks like a company and, and let's not forget a leader in Elon, who's a visionary and is, has proven to be an extremely good business person and extremely good at ensuring that his companies are constantly innovating and they have a culture of innovation. So when you put those three things together, whatever four things together that I just said, you have a blueprint for a company that's going to be extremely successful for the next three to five years. And even with Andre leaving, again, to me, that's not necessarily a negative to me. I always view those things as a positive because it opens up the door for the next generation of leaders to come into that seat to take the, the company forward. So to me, that also tells me that there's a healthy amount of turnover in the company that's allowing new faces to come in to bring fresh ideas and to move the company forward. In the last four months, we've seen improvements come through. Full, we've had some pretty drastic step changes in the last four months in full self-driving while Carpathy was in there, right? right? So the way I view full self-driving today is that I, I do believe that Tesla is going to reach level four by the end of this year, uh, probably in some markets, probably not everywhere, but San Fran, LA, who knows, maybe Austin, parts of Florida, so on and so forth. For those yeah. unfamiliar, explain level four. Yeah. So level four is essentially, you still have to have a steering wheel and, a, and pedals in the car, but uh, the driver will not need to pay attention, uh, at least for part of the drive. So the right. car will essentially take responsibility for getting you to point A to point B. Um, they'll, have, they'll have the necessary hardware and the software for the car to perform that. And I think they'll be able to showcase that at the end of this year, okay. which leads itself to a level five, which is going to be no pedals, no, no steering wheels into next year. And Tesla has been very open about saying that they're going to be, they're already working on a robo taxi solution, which is going to be that solution without a steering wheel and pedal, which tells me that wh why would Tesla be working on that unless they were confident they were going to have it, you know, and, and Tesla's always thinking multiple years ahead. 
if you draw a parallel back to Gigafactory Nevada, when that thing was being built in 2015, 2016, this was this was a year or two be, before, I believe, the Model 3 ramp even started. And Tesla's already like, we're building a battery factory. And everybody's like, why the hell are you doing that? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They're like, well, we're going to need a lot of batteries because we're going to be making a lot of cars. And this is one or two years ahead of time. And guess what? That Gigafactory was so important <laughs> in ensuring that Model 3 was able to get ramped. This robo taxi uh, approach that they're taking now, where they're going to come out with a car that has no steering wheels and pedals, is in, is in full preparation. That once that software is turned on and they're able to have fully driverless cars, they'll have the car that has that's able to take advantage of that software. So again, it's just par for the course of what Tesla does. They're preparing multiple years in advance, and they know how all these puzzle pieces play together, and they're just simply laying out those puzzle pieces so that in two years' time, the puzzle comes together, and boom. We have self-driving cars that are incredibly cheap to run and are going to transform the way we move around. I guess in part two of that question, do you also kind of get the sense that the mainstream media just seems to always bash Tesla? Clicks. I mean, it's it's name recognition. I mean, as a YouTuber now, I, I know what kind of t- title is going to bring viewers. I know what kind of thumbnail is going to bring viewers, but I don't do it because I, it's not in good faith. <laughs> you know, right, it's like, right. it's not in good faith, but I mean, I think you and I spoke about this a little bit when, when you came on my channel is, is uh, uh, mainstream media has certain incentives when it comes to driving traffic to their websites and right. bringing viewership. Right. So they're always going to try and leverage the most uh, salacious, the most clickbaity thing they can possibly muster to bring as many people to their site as humanly possible. It's, it's par for the course for the ma- mainstream media. I mean, and, and it's not going to stop. It's going to get way worse. It's going to get way worse. You know, once full self-driving is actually out of beta, we have robo taxis driving around. The headlines are going to be crazy. Are you, you know, I can already make one. Uh, when you ride a robo taxi, are you getting into a death trap? You know, read more <laughs> to find out. Like the, the headlines make themselves, you know, can you ever trust a car without a driver? You know, what could happen? <laughs> what are the things that could go wrong if no one's there, if something happens? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it, we live in a in a in a age of, of fear. Yeah. And exactly. uh, when you have a company that's risking so much to move technology forward, we talked we talked about this too. The people are afraid of uh, risky things. They're afraid of innovation. They're afraid of new things. Mass media companies know this, and they just, you know, they're give them props. They understand human psychology. You know, and so they're leveraging that to drive traffic to their to their websites. And Tesla is the, the shiniest thing they can use to make that happen. Now, I am so incredibly excited to be going to the Tesla shareholders meeting in person next month. They had a random lottery drawing this year. I entered and I couldn't believe my eyes when I got an email saying that I had gotten in. So I've been trying to brainstorm some really good questions to ask in case they have a Q&A. I have some ideas, but if there's a question that you really want me to try to ask during that shareholders meeting, please drop a comment below and I will make a list and hopefully get time for more than one. But even if I get one question, uh, I'll consider myself very lucky. So I'm really looking forward to that and just a ton of content that I have planned while I'm in Austin. So you won't want to miss it. Make sure to subscribe to Elian Space, like this video if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.